Hey there, Trailblazers. It's Christina Emanuel reporting with the Vanguard TV. Here's Alyssa Young with the Winter Guard. Good afternoon, Trailblazers. I'm Alyssa Young with the Vanguard TV. On March 25th, our school's Winter Guard went to Flag Night, which was hosted by Frisco High School. Frisco Flag Night is a night for all of the other color guards to perform for each other. All the FISD schools come together and show off our skills and what we've been learning and working on. Like the camaraderie between color guard schools is amazing. Like I like when everybody cheers. I like seeing when people catch a solid like seven or like I don't know like a quad is really awesome. We've been very lucky to have like a lot of we have tables and like a bed and a couch and rugs <laughs> basically on our, our set. I got to um, jump off the bed. I got to do cool toss on the bed. And it's just like performing, like the whole dancing aspect, you're connecting with the audience more than touching an equipment. There is a lot of preparation. Like we have lots of practices, so that aspect is a big part of it. And we have like props, you have to have costumes, you have to be in characters, we have to have our hair done, we have to make up on point. So my favorite aspect, it's probably the performing and just like eating Rita's ice cream afterwards and like breathing after a long performance. In my opinion, Frisco Flag Night's performance went really well. I was really nervous at first because there was a lot of people there and you just want to be really good for the other guards. But like it went pretty well because my adrenaline kicked in and it just kind of took me. I think it was one of our best that we've had because Miss Potter, she was like, that was like one of the best performances you guys have had publicly. And I feel the same way. It was kind of electric. We love watching the other performances to not like exactly compare ourselves, but just to see what they do differently that maybe we could do or like, just knowing that like, oh, some people struggle with the same things we do and just getting to see their facial expressions and other performances is awesome. It's really like a bonding experience because you're going out and you're scared in front of a lot of people. You've been really rehearsing and putting everything you have into this sport. Thanks for watching. I'm Alyssa Young with the Vanguard TV. Hi, I'm Christina Emanuel and welcome to Vanguard TV. Students have been expressing their concern about how bullying is being handled here at LT. Here's Ms. Pospic about how we handle bullying situations. Hello, I am Ms. Pospic. I am one of the APs here at Lebanon Trail. And today I'm gonna give some more information about the Stop It app and what happens when a bullying report is made. So the first thing is the Stop It app can be used to report a variety of things, anything that pertains to student safety or, um, or even security in the building. For bullying or harassment, um, most of our reports come through the Stop It app that way. And the biggest question that we have received is, is what happens on our end once that is reported. So the first thing that we do is we have all the students involved um, fill out a statement form, which looks like this. Um, we want to make sure that we have the whole picture of the situation from all perspectives. So anyone who may have witnessed it or the victim themselves and um, and then the alleged perpetrator. We get statements from, from all those students. So the first thing that we have to do as administrators is determine if it really is an instance of bullying or if it's just student conflict. So if we do find that it is a case of bullying and not a conflict between students, then we have to then determine what level of bullying it is. If it's a level one, level two, or a level three bullying or harassment issue. And determining what level that is um, determines the, the consequence that will be given. So it could be that no contact agreements are issued and maybe there's some reflection, maybe ISS is involved. And in some of those cases where it's repeated or just those more severe cases of bullying and harassment, it might be um, you know, OSS or maybe even a recommendation to, to go to the SOC. Then we also have a form, it's called a prohibited conduct form. And we give this to the victim and they have to fill that out. So we have all the information to go off of, especially when 
we are issuing those consequences. Um, so that's kind of our process. It sounds very simple, but it, it's very time consuming because again, we want to make sure that we talk to all the students involved and get a, a full picture of what's actually going on in that situation. Um, one thing that we have heard from a variety of students, they don't feel always that there have been consequences in these types of situations and they feel that nothing really happened to the person who was bullying them. And, um, and I wanted to clarify that that's, that's not true. Anytime there is a bullying instance, consequences are always given. However, because consequences are confidential, um, we can't share those with the victim or even the parents of the victim. Um, that is something that is between the student who's receiving the consequences and their parents. So, um, so while it may seem that nothing happened, I can assure you that all bull bullying instances and harassment issues are addressed accordingly and according to the consequences that, that we must follow um, per the district guidelines. Hello everyone, my name is Zach Widener and welcome to Today I'm going to be playing Mr. Holloman, our amazing theater director here. So let's get started. Okay. This here with all the ice on in the booth. So I'm going to ask you some questions as we play some bit of ping pong. So either we finish the interview first or I beat you in ping pong first. I have a feeling um, it will be me winning because I am a ping pong master. This is true. Okay. So can you go ahead and describe... Can you go ahead and describe the UIL theater season, like the show, what was about, actors and actresses in it, awards? Yes, we did um, a UIL play uh, called Violet Sharp. It's an amazing play. Um, it's a story of the Lindbergh baby kidnapping. Um, it's a very heavy play. Not a lot of humor involved in it. Um, and we had a good time. We uh, had some great success. We had an opportunity to advance Woo! several levels this year. <laughs> Um, and win a lot of awards along the way. We had a, a Best Actress. Uh, we won that award two times with Olivia Hankins, which was amazing. We had acting awards for Kyla Claiborne and Ma uh, Macy Butler and Cy Manjapudi. Um, and uh, it was just an overall great show. We had some fantastic tech awards. Uh, Zane Sobe won a, a tech award. Pat Clark and um, the wonderful Frank, Frank Ingalls. That's awesome. Oh. This is true. <laughs> Edit that. Got it. So we had to uh, restage the play several times. So I think that was the biggest challenge. But we are all about challenge here in the LTHS theater program. And um, we face those challenges head on. And at the end of the day, we become a better program because of it. Okay. I can't um, wait for you to edit this. Um, we also are anticipating the DSM Dallas Summer Musical um, nominations that actually come out on April 9th. So we're excited about the opportunity of getting some nominations um, for that contest for when we did Hairspray. And other than that... ...to create an amazing uh, product on stage with Hairspray. And so it's a big collaboration with the fine arts and we love, we love musicals. Hmm. So we've Ping done. Pong. There's black box theater and auditorium theater, obviously. Mm -hmm. So which would you say is more challenging, in your opinion, to direct? Because it's two different dynamics, really. Well, I actually have a better time directing in an intimate space. In the black box, you have seating on three sides. In some cases, in some cases you have seating on all four sides. I find it easier to direct, personally, in a black box situation, just because of the simple fact that every single audience member will get a different perspective of the show. And so when you're staging a production, you don't have to worry so much about whose back you see, who's not opening up to the audience, who can't be heard. So I feel like the black box is a great space to train actors because once you can master the uh, black box, being on the big stage is nothing but gravy. So
Okay. Last question. Gosh. Who's your favorite theater student? That's it for ping pong. Uh, be sure to tune in next time for more ping pong. And do you have any closing? Okay, that's your closing statement. You don't get one now. Okay. <laughs>